Hey Ratbags, it's Jade. In this video today, I'm gonna to guide you through every chip unlock. Basically, how to complete the game in what order. You can complete some of the laboratories in different orders, but really, this is probably the best way. I'm also gonna list my essential upgrades that you should think about. It's always about choice and how you play, but this is what I deem you absolutely should get first. They'll pop up on screen as I discuss each laboratory or place to get the chips. A few top tips thrown in as well, as well as explaining a little bit about the upgrade system, which has changed with 1.0. If you want to skip anything, then use the timestamps just to get to the chip to double check it unlocks whatever it is you want. And do leave a like if you find it useful. Let's go. So the very first one you'll get is the auto unlock. You don't have to get any chips for it. You get all of these upgrades potentially. Smithing station is the first one. You can get this and then go ahead and start upgrading your weapons and armor pieces up to level one to five. You'll probably come across a brittle quartzite and brittle marble out in the world, and this is what you can then make into brittle whetstone and brittle plating once you've unlocked the smithing station. Later on, you'll find a chip that allows you to directly craft the brittle whetstone and brittle plating out of bug parts and other resources. But for now, you're going to have to go and find a lot of them stones yourself before you can make the whetstone and plating. I'm going to work on a smaller upgrade guide for this as well, but yeah, just give everyone a bit of a handle, especially for the new players. Cooking 101 will unlock the cookery station as well as nachos and mite loaf recipes. I would say that the materials needed to make it are probably a bit advanced for early game and I don't think you really need it. Live off aphids, weevils and grubs. Cooking will come important later on, but yeah, not in the early stages. Then you've got multi-story bases, that's going to give you access to the roofs and the corner pieces so you can make multi-level buildings. Then you've got pebblet foundations for lay to make all sorts of paving as well as the foundations and corner pieces. Then you've got 45 bases which allow you to make walls and doorways out of grass and weed stems. As well as some structural support like clay pillars, stem pillars and pebblet pillars. Out of them three, I'd go for the 45 bases first. Torch upgrade is nice, it just means you've got more durability, but I would actually get meat shield. That would be the second thing that i really go for as essential. Extra health as a mutation. Then we've got the sign set which offers some decorating signs which I don't think are really that needed and then the scab scanner which will allow you to any science points around the yards which is pretty vital for new players. Nestled at the very bottom of the red anthill is where you're going to find the red anthill chip. Top tip, make an armour set out of red ants and they will leave you alone as long as you don't hurt them while exploring. Grabbing this chip is going to give you access to the fibre bandage efficiency, a canteen upgrade, Buff lungs, a mutation that increases your stamina, sign set creatures, and the scab scanner, scabs. Again, early days, I would actually go for the buff lungs mutations, give you that increase in stamina, and maybe the fiber bandage efficiency. It reduces how much you need to actually make bandages. The canteen upgrade, I don't feel like it's absolutely necessary. And the scab scanner, scabs, I feel like that's something you might want to do at the end of the game, to set yourself a challenge, give you a reason to visit some old areas, especially as you get better gear. But obviously it would come in handy if you're someone that's going to just do the game once and then pretty much forget about it. You might want to find all the collectibles as you go. The hedge is a parkour challenge that you'd have to start right by the decking before eventually ending up at the hedge laboratory. Top tip, bring a tuft. So hand it over to Burgle, you get 2000 raw science for doing so. So zip lines for 2,500 raw science, simply put, you can craft zip lines to get around the map. I wouldn't do this too early though, because you can only go down them, so you have to build up pretty high to get them to go back to your base. And for that reason, almost alone, I don't like them. I don't have to build up huge, massive towers and stuff. I just prefer to go and explore or maybe spend more time building my base. But yeah, I guess eventually you can get them. It just means you miss out also on bug encounters and you might not get as much of the resources you need as you go in one place to another. Ladders are a bit easier to make and they can certainly help get you up to the upper yard a bit quicker or certain places, so it might be viable, but again, there's still other upgrades I would get out of the hedge or the next set of chips. The cookbook hedge is pretty expensive for getting lavagna, which is probably the most useful as you get critical hit chance by cooking up larvae, hot dog pieces, as well as grub glue or grub gloop. And then a daredevil mutation, I think still pretty useless. As long as you've got a tuft of grass on you, you don't ever have to worry about dying when you fall. Although there's more accessories now to take that slot, I would still say there's definitely better stuff you can spend your science on in the early days. And another sign set, the crow set. The pond is where you're going to need your breathing gear, so make sure you get the diving reed stick. And I would say focus on the rest of the areas of the pond once you've actually turned the power on. By then you've gathered lots and lots of resources to craft more better gear to explore the pond's depths. 
So again, another 2000 raw science for handing Burgle the pawn chip. If you're taking your time in the game, you're building up a base, you don't mind about just gathering lots of resources slowly, I would say go for it. Go start building a base on the water, make a water castle, whatever you want to do. Otherwise, most of these are pretty useless. I am a bit of a min-maxer. I like being able to get the best gear first as quickly as possible and then think about making something pretty or a bit more lavish. Buoyant foundations will allow you to build on the water, but you do need to have unlocked, obviously, again, the kind of fibre spinning. Curved bases are what you're going to need if you want to make nice rounded towers. And the cookbook pond is probably one of the most useless. You're just not going to spend enough time in the pond. Or if you are, or have already explored the pond to get the chips, then you probably won't need to dive down too much more. You can still just get away with using your diving gear you've already got, as well as maybe the Mertia mutation. So a lot of these are pretty useless. You won't even need them when you get into the upper yard pond. There are some pretty dangerous creatures up there, but hopefully you won't land in the water too often and you'll be able to get out quickly before you get nabbed by them. So I really don't think it's worth wasting your points on these. Then I would say the turret pollen, yeah, it's another one that you might need for endgame when you're getting raided by lots of creatures, but you need a whole ton of pollen to really make it effective. And pollen's pretty hard to get hold of. You can find it in certain flowers and bees drop it occasionally randomly, but otherwise I just don't think it's worth it. It stuns enemies and creatures when you shoot at them, but yeah, it's a lot of money for something that still is a bit underwhelming. So unless you're going to be getting raided all the time because you're killing hundreds and hundreds of the same bug, I really wouldn't bother yet. And then another sign set, science. The outpost pond chip or the underwater treasure chip is in a tunnel underneath this rock guarded by diving belt spiders. You need to get a key that'll open up the treasure chest. It's not as obvious, that's why I'm showing you how to get it for this one. So if you only turned on the power in the pond and you haven't really explored anything else, it might be worth getting some of these ones, like the fin flops upgrade and diving lantern upgrade, just to go and explore all the other caves, all the other places you can in the pond and get more loot and more stuff. It is pretty optional, but I still think if you're going to do that, then absolutely get them two upgrades. The splat burst recipe is really unneeded. You can pretty much just drop a grenade in a really good spot most of the time. It won't roll away. And so you don't really need the splat burst until much later when you really are going to be taking out enemies, maybe with explosives. When you hand the haze chip in, I got 2,500. Unless it's for handing in three chips in total, the super chips, I'm not 100% sure. And this progresses the next part of the story. The Haze Lab has two entrances, one where you need a bomb to get in, or one in an exposed pipe where you need a tier 2 knife. Filled with the infected dangerous bugs, you'll obviously need a gas mask, or one of the brand new Ominent Card accessories that gives you protection against the Haze. So now we're getting into when you're actually going to start spending your raw science, and that's the advanced production buildings. This is how you're going to be able to make your mushroom bricks, to make mushroom build pieces, which I think is one of the most important things for helping out later on. You do need to be able to get the charcoal charcoal though, and you're still going to obviously need an antlion suit to do that mostly. So it is a bit more advanced for sure, but absolutely I think that's the most important thing you should buy. And then the rest is kind of skippable unless you are a real base builder, like feathered roos made out of obviously the crow feathers. If you have built up a good amount of the fungal growth, it could be a good idea to get the haze cookbook because it is pretty powerful having that attack stamina boost. Likewise, if you've got lots of spider parts, then it's pretty good to make the spider slider for that critical hit chance. But again, it's still all about the smoothie life. Out of the two turrets, I would get the pebblet turret first, as you can easily get enough of the ammo to fill it up, and it might be a bit more useful in base raids. And then the sign set, daydream, again, nah. The black ant hill is where we're going next, so you're going to have to dive into the rubbish, and you should find the entrance just here. Top tip, make sure you bring at least two bombs with you. It's a tough one this one, you have to fight the mini boss the assistant manager, but you do get 3000 raw science. And now you can finally spend more of your raw science, this is the most important stuff. The advanced smithing mighty glob, the advanced brittle upgrades and the advanced smithing glue masher. The mighty glob will mean that you can upgrade all of your weapons and armours to level 6 and 7 using the marble, the sturdy marble that you found or the sturdy quartzite. And remember when I said you'd be able to craft your own brittle pieces later on out of bug parts? Well, this is how you now do it because it gives you the recipe for it for 1,500 using lava pieces and obviously sap to make the brittle whetstone. And for the brittle plating, it's sap and some of the grub skin. And now you can go ahead and make as much of that as you want to get all your armor and weapons up to level 1 to 5. And by this stage, you probably have got a lot of that hanging around. 
With the sturdy stuff, it's just like I said before, you won't be able to actually make the sturdy stuff yourself until you've gone and got the recipe where again, you combine bug parts to go ahead and make it all your, on your own. Until you get this recipe, you can only use the sturdy quartzite stone and sturdy marble that you find. And once that runs out, that's it. Any gear that you've got up to levels one to five, you need to repair it using bug parts or resources. But once you get it to level six and seven, everything from beyond then is gonna need glue. You can make glue out of tons of different types of bug parts, whether it's bomb deer, beetle parts, spider parts, and more. So definitely get this. Lures to help bring down bees and certain other creatures, but it doesn't work on all of them, so I wouldn't necessarily use it too much. Although the lure arrows could be good for starting fights between maybe bees and other creatures. And then you've got the cookbook sandbox. You need lots of ant eggs for this one, so it's maybe not worth it getting that. But the Quisilda ant lion can be really good, particularly if you've still got lots of stuff to do around the sizzle area or the barbecue zone. The Wafter Meter is kind of like a little bonus thing. A hall defense, liven things up, get itself good at combat. It will summon creatures depending on what creature parts you put inside it. It doesn't really give you more than what you put back in. In fact, sometimes you put more bug parts in and you might not necessarily get as many back from the ones that you've killed. So use it as something to have some fun with your friends. A little gauntlet, like I said, freshen stuff up a little bit or get used to dealing with big waves of creatures. And then obviously we've got the sign set glow. That's another one that I just wouldn't bother with. Explore the sandbox at night or make sure you've gone and got some sizzle protection by killing ant lions to get their pieces to make armor. Also top tip, look for a way to get the key to get the mint mace. If you go to the laboratory in the sandbox, of course, you'll be able to upgrade one of the most important ones, the flavored globs. This is how you're gonna make your spicy, mint, salty and sour globs to give elemental damage types to your weapons. So make sure you go through the extra tunnel that leads directly to the sandbox rather than the other way out when you've completed the Black Ant Hill and make sure you go to that laboratory first, grab this and then head back to base. You can always come back to the sandbox later to explore a bit more. Applying elemental damage types can really change the game in terms of what you're doing. Taking the right weapon to the right creatures as you've been peeping them is super important. Not so super important, doodle sign set. Just left off the table from this point of view, you can see the exposed pipe. That's where you'll find a key that you'll need a tier two knife to get to open up this chest. Top tip, bring a bomb to blow up the spade to get easy access to the picnic table. What you want straight away is the mint mallet, absolutely one of the best weapons in the game still. And then yeah, for sure, get the milk motor scanner for a new player, or maybe just go and watch some guides. 5,000 raw science is expensive, but you will absolutely get more upgrades and improve your character by doing it. And of course, we got food and stuff, another sign set. The wood pile, you need to venture all the way to the back to face off against the termite king. He does respawn after a good few days or so, or maybe even a week. So make sure you recheck as you're gonna need these body parts to make the wizard hat and the staves. Bring something salty. Once you get the chip back to Burgle, it's all about getting the candy canes and then the wizard hat. Top tip, you can craft a tier three ax, which you'll need. But check my guide for the pinch whacker as that's going to be better for you meaning you can save the termite king parts to go ahead and make the wizard hat the staves are good but if raw science is a little bit of a worry at the moment i would say hold off a bit until you can make sure you can upgrade them they're okay at low levels but they really come into their own once you've actually got the wizard hat for sure and you're able to go ahead and get some of the upgrades for tiers six and seven at least You'll gain access to a spicy, a sour, as well as a fresh staff, and they've got various degrees of different stun ability. I've done a guide on all of that, so go and check it out. The wizard hat complements it by giving you extra parry ability and more damage. And again, the cookbook wood pile. By this point, you're probably looking at some of the other cookbooks that you might not have unlocked. You should have got them as well before maybe getting this one. And the last sign there is more creatures. The last chip to be added, pretty much the stump chip. This is in a hidden laboratory. That's one of the biggest parkour challenges. It's pretty advanced how you actually gain access to it as you're gonna to need to defeat the assistant manager and also activate your doorway. So again, look up one of my guides that I've done for it. You'll get a whopping 5,000 science points when you turn this one into Burgle. This is what's gonna unlock more of the advanced materials to go ahead and upgrade. You won't be getting this for ages. Now we're talking about end game gear. This is how you're gonna start upgrading and getting level eight and nine weapons and armor. You get the advanced smithing mighty jewel and then you get the advanced flavor jewels. And this is how you can really, really go to town. 
And just like before, you're now able to also craft your own sturdy upgrades without having to find the rocks using spider parts and sap or ladybug parts and sap. Warning though, of course, the advanced smithing stuff like the flavored jewels and the mighty jewels, they will require some of the supreme stones. And you're not going to be able to get them until you get a tier 3 hammer to break them open. And you're not going to be able to craft your own supreme whetstones or plating until you've defeated the next boss, which is obviously in Mordok's castle. The idea is that you're meant to go around the whole yard exploring, gathering these materials up, rather than being able to craft it out of unlimited supply of bug parts that you've killed. By the time you get the next set of upgrades, you pretty much completed the game. But hopefully by now, going around the whole yard, you've built up at least enough of the supreme parts to go ahead and make at least one decent armor set or a couple weapons up max upgraded to level 8 or 9. You've then got the ash cement walls and they're really expensive to make. You have to make go ahead and make the charcoal ash and then you've got to make the ash cement and it's just so, so, so long to get all that stuff you're better off just using double mushroom walls, which will probably be quicker and easier now you've grown a ton of them. The walls are definitely harder, but I would still say, yeah, it's too much effort making them using the rust. And then we've got the sign set, Girthscape. Then it's time to actually almost finish the game. Spoilers, go and investigate the Undershed area. There's no chip, but obviously it does give you the end game item. Also a cooler box recipe. Expect it to be difficult though to get it through. And last is obviously going to the boss in the castle, no spoilers, and getting the upgrades there. This is like the end of the game. This is for people that are going to carry on playing grounded, killing bugs, building their bases to get the most out of all of their gear, weapons and armor and huge upgrades. This will give you the ability to upgrade unlimited amounts as long as you've got the bug parts for the supreme plating and the supreme whetstones. This is where you're going to need a whole ton of black ox horns as well as ladybird pieces or shells to get all the supreme crafting as eventually the supreme rocks will run out. After that, it's the sour battle axe, but it's really optional. There's plenty of other weapons in the game, but it is the only already made weapon made out of sour. Then you've got the orc disruptor sort of base defense mines. They're not that great. They're there to really stun creatures, particularly the orc ones that might be wandering around those disruption bombs. I wouldn't bother with them really. They're too expensive to make. And unless you're getting a huge wave of NM kinds of enemies late in the game, it's just not worth it. So there you go, there are some other little recipes here and there, but they are the chip ones, they're the ones that are going to progress the story, and that's the order that you should really complete Grounded in. As I said, you can do some of them in a different order, you could go straight from the Ant Hill and maybe go and complete the ponds and then the hedge, or you might want to try and do in the picnic table before you go ahead and do the Black Ant Hill or the Haze, but really, the way it progresses, that's the best way to do things. Look out for my shorter guides, obviously talking more about crafting and go and check out all my ultimate guides that I did pre-release for some of the early areas like the hedge, the pond and obviously the haze. They're still valid, there's only a few minor changes so it'll still help you out. As always I'll be back with more guides for grounded and news, until then I'll see you ratbags later.